My ex and I were together for six years, engaged for six months. His daughter, 14 years old, and I got along fine until she accused me of being a discriminatory. My ex, myself, his daughter, and BM, baby mom, would all hang out and everything was great. We would always hang out at his BM's house and with her family. I would always come up with ideas for us to do stuff, but she never wanted to leave the house. On a few occasions, I told my ex in private that his BM made me uncomfortable because she kept saying the N-word, I'm the only black person, and comparing my relationship with him to theirs, and even telling me about intimate details from their relationship. At first, he told me I was overreacting and creating unnecessary drama, but other people started to point it out too. After a year, his daughter started staying with us on weekends. So I thought it was no longer necessary for me to hang out with his BM, as she knew who I was and was comfortable with her daughter being around me. During infection 19, his daughter stayed with us during school nights. As my ex and I became more serious, his BM became meaner and more toxic toward him, saying he was a bad dad and didn't spend any time with her or her family anymore. Which was weird because he was always with his daughter. Him and his BM were fighting all the time. The following year, his BM started to withhold his daughter from us and would only let my ex have supervised visits with his daughter if the BM was present. I was not allowed to come. When he asked what her issue was, she stated, your girl made me feel some type of way. After doing supervised visits for a year with no change or room for growth, my ex took his BM to court for partial custody. She told her lawyer that I was a discriminatory and he was physically, verbally hurtful toward her. She said I said all white people are ugly, I'm half white, and that I hated Jewish people. My ex and I both denied these claims as they were not true. Their daughter at the time was 12. I overheard my ex and his daughter on the phone and she was calling me a bad person and said that she didn't want to be around me. She later told my ex she felt that I put a wedge between him and her mom, and that she wasn't willing to talk to me unless her mom was willing to. Eight months later, we went to court, and his daughter accused me of being a discriminatory, co-signing everything her mom said, as well as accusing my ex of being hurtful toward her and her mother. The following month, my ex and I got engaged. Six months later, I found out he cheated on me citing my relationship with his daughter being the reason why, and then blamed me for him not having a good relationship with his daughter. I put him out. I found out I was pregnant the following month. He recently told his daughter about the pregnancy and she's really excited to be a big sister. But after everything, I want nothing to do with her and I don't want her around my child. Am I the idiot for saying his daughter is not allowed to be in our child's life? Now for a few comments before the update. Comment one. Can I ask why you're complicating things for yourself by keeping the baby in the first place? He cheated on you and attempted to put the responsibility of the cheating on you instead of taking responsibility. I'm not in your position, so I can't tell you what to do, but from the context provided, I would sever all ties. Comment two. Not the idiot I would never let her near my child for fear she might fabricate another lie about me that could cost me custody. Imagine. Her mother and father reconnect now that you're out of the picture, and they get her to lie that you are harassing your baby so that her father gets custody. No, ma'am? Now for the update. Hey, everyone. Thanks for all the comments and support on my last post. It's been a wild couple of weeks since then, and I wanted to give you all an update on what's been going on. So after I found out I was pregnant and decided I didn't want my ex's daughter in our child's life, things got pretty heated between us. He kept insisting that she had a right to be a part of her half-sibling's life, but I just couldn't get past the fact that she had accused me of being a discriminatory and had co-signed all the horrible things her mom said about me in court. I mean, how could I trust her around my child after that? We argued about it for days, and it got to the point where we were barely speaking. I thought about packing up and leaving, but with the pregnancy and everything, I didn't know where I would go. That's when my ex dropped a news on me. Turns out, he had been talking to his daughter behind my back, trying to smooth things over between us. And apparently, she had finally admitted that her mom had pressured her into lying about me in court. She said she never actually thought I was a discriminatory, but her mom had convinced her that it was the only way to keep her dad from getting partial custody. I was shocked. I mean, I had always suspected that his ex was manipulating their daughter, but to hear it confirmed like that was a lot to take in. 
My ex said his daughter wanted to apologize to me in person and try to make amends, but I wasn't sure if I was ready for that. In the end, I agreed to meet with her, but only if my ex was there too. When she showed up at our place, I could tell she was nervous. She couldn't even look me in the eye at first. But then she started talking, and it all came pouring out. She said she was sorry for everything she had put me through, and that she knew it was wrong to lie about me in court. She said her mom had been filling her head with all sorts of crazy ideas about me, and she had been too scared to stand up to her. But now that she was older, she realized how messed up it all was. I listened to her, and I could feel myself starting to soften a bit. I mean, I knew what it was like to be caught in the middle of two parents who were always fighting, and I could see how much she regretted what she had done. But then she said something that really threw me for a loop. She said she had always looked up to me and had wanted us to be close, but she felt like I had pushed her away when I stopped hanging out with her mom. She said she thought I didn't like her anymore, and that's why she had gone along with her mom's lies. Hearing that broke my heart a little bit. I realized that maybe I had been too quick to write her off, and that I hadn't really considered how my actions might have affected her. I mean, I was just trying to protect myself from her toxic mom, but in doing so, I had inadvertently hurt her too. We talked for a long time after that, and I could feel the tension between us starting to ease. I told her that I forgave her for what she had done and that I wanted us to start fresh. She seemed relieved and even a little excited at the prospect of being a big sister. But as much as I wanted to move forward, I knew it wasn't going to be easy. There was still a lot of hurt and mistrust between us, and I wasn't sure how long it would take to fully heal. Plus, I had to think about my own child now and what was best for them. In the end, my ex and I decided that his daughter could be a part of our child's life, but with some boundaries in place. We agreed that she could come over for supervised visits, but only when my ex was there too. And we made it clear that any negative talk about me or our family would not be tolerated. It's been a few weeks since then, and things are slowly getting better. His daughter has been coming over more often, and we've even started doing some fun things together, like baking cookies and watching movies. It's not perfect, but it's a start. I know we still have a long way to go, but I'm hopeful that with time and patience, we can all find a way to be a family. It's not going to be easy, but I'm willing to put in the work if it means giving my child the best possible life. Anyway, that's where things are at now. Thanks again for all the support and advice. It really means a lot to me. <laughs> Ida for not wanting my stepdaughter to move in because of her eating habits. My husband and I have been together for about 10 years and have a six-year-old daughter together. I am also currently eight months pregnant. My husband has a 16-year-old daughter with his ex-wife. They divorced when she was two. They shared 50-50 custody until she was about five when his ex moved with her parents to another state, where they still currently live. It's about a 4.5 hour drive. She has always spent six weeks in the summer with him, us, and visits for a week or so at a time during a couple of holidays, school breaks, and regularly joins us for vacations. He, we travel to visit her for her birthday every year and drive out for her band performances and major events. She has a room here, and recently has asked to move in with us after the school year ends due to issues she is having at school, which everyone is fine with. The issue is she has a very unhealthy relationship with food. She has been raised that way by her mom grandmother. Her mom's whole side of the family is very fat positive. Her mom is around 400 LBs and very anti-diet, despite being a T2 diabetic and having other health issues. From my experience, she is a binge eater, as is her mom and siblings, and unfortunately, my stepdaughter as well. Everything in their house revolves around eating to excess. She, at 16, South Dakota, is 5'2 and over 250 LBs, and bullying at school is a big part of the reason she wants to go to school here next year. She missed so much school due to it she is behind a year. We aren't health nuts by any means, but we do try to eat fairly healthy in our homes. We allow treats, but only in moderation. An ongoing issue we have had when SD visits is... She wants a lot of junk food in the house. Soda, candy, cookies, ice cream, chips, etc. She will take huge servings or eat straight from the package in large amounts. For example, she will grab a new pack of Oreos, bring it into the living room to watch a movie, and eat one, two of it or more in one sitting. She will drink four or five cans of soda a day. Her dad has tried talking to her about it, but her response is that she is fine the way she is and he needs to stop trying to force her to lose weight. It's usually followed by an angry call from his ex. 
We will keep some ice cream or cookies in the house and have them here and there, but they usually last a few weeks. When she visits, they are always gone almost instantly, and she regularly goes to the store or orders more with the money her mom gives her. My concern is our daughter is getting older, and I am concerned about this behavior being modeled for her. I also don't want the house being full of unhealthy food or my daughter thinking it is a normal, acceptable way to eat. I don't mind her having a treat here and there, but IMO's stepdaughter is a binge eater and has been raised to think it is okay, and I really don't want that for my daughter. I understand it is a sensitive topic, but I do not want my daughter to face the struggles my SD is now and will face in the future. I'm not sure how to address it, and I'm not sure if it makes me the AH. Now, for a few comments before the update. Comment 1. Not the idiot. Look, I get it. There are some medical reasons that make weight loss difficult. I don't agree with picking on anyone or making fun of them. I know being fat doesn't mean that you are lazy or not athletic. All that being said, I think to an extent it is child abuse to let your children gain that much weight. Her weight gain is clearly accepted, encouraged, supported, and defended by her mother. Mom doesn't want to be her mom, only her friend. Parents should never want to be a friend. They are parents. Also, this whole culture trend of defending and glamorizing it is disgusting. I'm not saying we should fat shame, but we definitely should not glamorize or normalize it. I think her living with you will do a lot of good. Get her involved in a sport, take her walking, teach her how to exercise, enforce healthy eating habits, allow some junk food, but in very small amounts, replace them with fruit or vegetables instead. Comment two, not the idiot. There is a difference between being fat, positive, and unhealthy. It's not about your looks, it's about your health. At the end of the day, being obese is unhealthy. There is a conversation that will need to be had about what living with you all will look like and what boundaries rules in the house will be followed if she is to live under your roof. It won't be a pleasant conversation, but you knew that. But it's important for you and your husband to be on the same team and let her know before she moves. She's a big girl, no pun intended now, and she has to pick and choose the sacrifices she wants to make. If she wants to live with you, she needs to understand what that means and make an informed decision based on that information. Now, for the update. Hey everyone, thanks for reading my update. It's been a wild couple of weeks since I last posted. So, my stepdaughter moved in with us as planned after the school year ended. The first few days were a bit rocky as we all adjusted to the new living situation, but overall, things seemed to be going well. She was excited to start at her new school and make new friends. However, the issues with food quickly resurfaced. We had a family meeting where we discussed our concerns and tried to establish some ground rules. We explained that while we wanted her to feel at home, we also needed to maintain a healthy environment for our younger daughter. My stepdaughter got defensive and accused us of trying to control her. The conversation ended in tears and slammed doors. Over the next week, we caught her sneaking food into her room late at night. We found empty candy wrappers and chip bags hidden under her bed. When confronted, she broke down and confessed that she was struggling with the changes and felt like food was her only comfort. We decided to seek professional help and found a therapist who specializes in eating disorders. My stepdaughter was resistant at first, but after a few sessions, she started to open up. It turns out that her eating habits were a coping mechanism for the stress and anxiety she felt at her old school and the pressure she felt from her mom's side of the family to embrace her size. As we delved deeper into her past, we discovered that her mom had been dealing with her own eating disorder for years. It was a cycle that had been passed down from generation to generation. My stepdaughter had never known any different. With the help of therapy and our support, my stepdaughter slowly started to make progress. She began to recognize her triggers and developed healthier coping mechanisms. We worked together as a family to create a balanced and nutritious meal plan that everyone could enjoy. But just as things were starting to look up, we hit another roadblock. My stepdaughter's mom found out about the therapy and accused us of trying to brainwash her daughter. She threatened to take legal action and revoke our custody agreement. We were at a loss. We knew that the therapy was helping, but we also didn't want to risk losing my stepdaughter altogether. After many long and difficult conversations, we reached a compromise. My stepdaughter would continue therapy, but we would keep her mom informed of her progress and involve her in the process as much as possible. It hasn't been easy, but we're taking things one day at a time.
My stepdaughter still struggles with her eating habits, but she's learning to be more mindful and to listen to her body's needs. Our younger daughter has been a great support system for her, and they've grown closer as a result. As for me, I've had to confront my own biases and assumptions about weight and health. I've learned that it's not about size, but about overall well-being, both physical and mental. I'm proud of the progress we've made as a family, but I know there's still a long road ahead. Thanks for sticking with me through this update. It's been a challenging few weeks, but I'm hopeful for the future. AIT for confronting a woman who tried to babysit my baby without permission at a party. My husband and I have a six month old daughter and two older kids, eight and 10. We had gone to one of his buddy's houses this past weekend to grab a four wheeler we had just bought off of him and hang out a bit. We only had the baby with us. Our older kids are on vacation with Grammy in Florida. At some point, people started showing up. As apparently this buddy was having a party that night with BBQ, we had no idea. This guy convinced my husband to stay until we ate with them. I didn't really want to because people were drinking and a few already appeared drunk, and we had the baby. But I decided to just let my husband have his fun because he never gets out anymore. He works two jobs and busts his butt for us. So I just hung out with the few sober people there, two other moms who had their own children and husbands with them, well, I had handed our daughter off to my husband at one point so I could go inside and use the restroom. There was a small line, so I was gone roughly 10 minutes. When I came back, I saw my husband without the baby and him just hawk-eyeing off in another direction. I go over and find some woman holding the baby. I ask him what's going on and he goes, she literally just took the baby from me and went to sit down. Now, I know my husband well and confrontation gives him severe anxiety, very hurtful childhood so I went over and took the baby back. The woman tried protesting and I simply said, my baby, I get to decide when I want her back, thanks. I walk off and ignore the situation. But every time I glanced back at my husband, this woman was right there with him and engaging in conversation. I didn't think anything of it. But when I went over there maybe 30 minutes later, this woman immediately tries taking the baby and says to me, I was just talking to your husband about me babysitting. I live right up the road. I can't have kids, so I just watch other people's kids for free. Blah, blah, whatever. All while literally trying to fight my baby out of my arms, like kept putting her hands out to her and would follow me when I turned. Once even trying to grab underneath my daughter's arms and lift. I asked her to please stop and she goes, but she likes me. Now it's important to note here that this woman was not talking like a person trying to play with a baby. It was an incredibly serious, monotone, matter-of-fact, demanding type of voice the entire time. I don't think I saw her smile once, even when she was holding the baby originally. I told her again to stop trying to take the baby, and she goes, well, how do you intend for the baby to get used to me? I would prefer she gets used to me before I babysit. I straight up told her I would never allow her to babysit, and she looked incredibly offended and snapped, why? So I said, because you're a drunk woman that we don't know trying to take my baby after I've already said no. You're acting like a freaking kidnapper. To my surprise, she immediately starts crying and just walks off silently. My husband is on my side here, 100%. He said that the entire time she was talking to him, it was her telling him how to get to her house to drop off the baby, what the baby would need, etc. So she was being freaking weird. She didn't even tell us her name. But another woman at the party, her best friend apparently, said that I'm out of line and that Mary is an incredibly good woman with a heart of gold. And she only speaks like that because she feels like less of a woman and is insecure because she can't have children of her own and her only desire is to be a mom. But since she can't, she takes pride in helping other parents, etc., etc., etc. I don't feel bad at all. But my husband is starting to think that maybe we overreacted and judged the situation too harshly. ETA. Just for a bit of context here, this woman was really drunk, so this could essentially be why she was acting so demanding. If she was sober, she could potentially be an entirely different person. Now for a few comments before the update. Comment one, nope. A stranger literally trying to remove your six month old baby from your arms after being told no, explicitly, several times, is exactly the type of scenario where you are well within your right to make a scene, I would have gone to the homeowners and explained that we have to leave because their guest was making me feel unsafe. Comment two, not the jerk. Your husband's behavior is shocking and concerning. 
It doesn't matter how anxious he gets. It's absolutely unacceptable that he let some stranger take his child from his arms and did absolutely nothing about it. He needs to have intensive therapy. I wouldn't trust him to be alone with any children. Now, for the update. Hey everyone, thanks for all the comments and support on my last post. It's been a busy few days since then, and I apologize if this update is a bit scattered. You know how it is with ADHD brain. So, after the whole incident at the party, my husband and I decided to head home. We were both pretty shaken up by the whole thing, and I couldn't stop thinking about how weird and creepy that woman had been. I mean, who just tries to take someone's baby like that? It was unsettling, to say the least. The next day, my husband got a call from his buddy, the one who had hosted the party. Apparently, Mary had been going around telling everyone that we were terrible parents and that she was worried about our baby's safety. She even went as far as to say that she was considering calling CPS on us. I was livid when I heard this. How dare she try to paint us as bad parents when she was the one acting like a lunatic? My husband tried to calm me down, saying that maybe we had overreacted a bit and that Mary was just trying to help in her own weird way, but I couldn't let it go. I decided to do some digging and see if I could find out more about this woman. What I found was disturbing, to say the least. Turns out Mary had a history of trying to take other people's kids. She had been arrested a few years back for attempting to kidnap a child from a grocery store. The charges were eventually dropped, but it was clear that this woman had some serious issues. I showed my husband what I had found, and he was just as shocked as I was. We both agreed that we needed to keep our distance from Mary and make sure she never came near our kids again. But things took a turn for the worse when my husband's buddy called again. He said that Mary had shown up at his house, drunk and hysterical, demanding to see our baby. She was screaming about how we were unfit parents and how she was going to take our daughter away from us. My husband's buddy managed to get her to leave, but not before she caused a huge scene. The police were called, and Mary was arrested for disorderly conduct and trespassing. I wish I could say that was the end of it, but unfortunately, it wasn't. A few days later, we got a call from CPS. Someone had made an anonymous report claiming that we were neglecting our children and that our home was unfit for them to live in. I was beside myself with worry. I knew we were good parents, but the thought of losing our kids was terrifying. We cooperated fully with the investigation, and thankfully, the case was eventually closed. But the whole ordeal left us shaken and paranoid. Looking back, I can't help but wonder if we could have handled things differently. Maybe if we had been more understanding of Mary's situation, things wouldn't have escalated the way they did. But at the same time, I don't regret standing up for myself and my family. No one has the right to try and take someone else's child, no matter what their reasons may be. I guess the whole experience has just made me realize how fragile everything is. One moment, you're just trying to enjoy a party with your family, and the next, your whole world is turned upside down. It's a harsh reminder that you can never be too careful when it comes to protecting the ones you love. Anyway, that's pretty much it for now. Thanks for listening to me ramble on. It feels good to get it all out there. Here's hoping things start looking up from here on out. If you like this video, you'll probably like these too. Also, while you're here, please consider subscribing. It's your support that keeps this channel alive and allows me to make better and longer videos. Have a great day.